So in this video, we're going to talk about the limitations of the particle model. You're already familiar with the particle model from previous lessons. So in this lesson, we're just going to talk about the problems with the particle model that we've not talked about. So our lesson objectives are to compare the sizes of the particles to the distances between them, describe the forces between the particles, and explain the limitations of the particle model. So the, problem, the main problems with the particle model uh, just summarized on this slide so the model doesn't show it doesn't show the movement of the particles so it's a 2d diagram it doesn't show the movement of the particles it doesn't show the forces of attraction between the particles it doesn't show the relative distances between the particles compared to the size of the particles and it doesn't show the change in volume during melting and boiling and we'll go through these problems individually on the next few slides so the first problem with the particle model is that it doesn't really show the movement of particles so in these 2D diagrams, it doesn't show how the particles are moving. So sometimes people interpret this that the particles aren't moving, particularly for the solid diagram. So in the solid diagram, although they appear fixed in the diagram, they're not. The particles vibrate around the fixed position. So relative to each other, they stay in the same position, but they're vibrating about that fixed position. So they don't move past each other, but they are still continually moving. In a liquid, the particles are still very close together, as you can see on the diagram, but they're continually moving past each other. So the, one particle that is next to another particle, one second, the next second, it'll be ne next to a diff completely different particle. In the gas diagram, the particles are moving very fast and they're moving in random directions. So they're not just moving past each other, they're moving away from each other, towards each other very fast and in random directions. And that's not really clearly seen on these diagrams. Sometimes you see people try to draw arrows on to show their vibration in the solid or in the gas to show that they're moving quickly. It's very rare to see arrows in a liquid, but they don't really get across the nature of the movement very well. So the second problem is these particle diagrams don't show the forces of attraction between the particles. So in a solid, you've got very strong forces of attraction between the particles. They're very close to each other. They've got very strong forces of attraction between them. And when we melt a, a substance and turn it into a liquid, then you have to, that energy that you're putting into melt is overcoming these forces of attraction between the particles. So in a, in a liquid, you've overcome some of those forces of attraction. So there's still forces of attraction there. They're reasonably still strong, not as strong as in a solid. So we're going to say the medium strength. So not as strong as in a solid, but they're much stronger than they are in a gas. They're still very close to each other. So there's still going to be forces of attraction between those particles. Now, once you put the energy into the liquid and turned it into a gas, then the forces of attraction between the gas particles are very weak because they're very, very far away from each other. And therefore, there's not that much attraction between them. There's still some attraction, but not much. It's very weak. So the next problem with the particle model is to do with the gas particle diagram. So the, the solid and the liquid are OK in this respect. It's the gas one that this is really a problem for, because it doesn't show the size of the particles relative to the distance between the particles. So we're all used to seeing this particle diagram here, where you've got the particles very close to each other. So there's, there's gaps in between them. But if you look at the size of the particle and you look at the distance between the two particles, some of them aren't even one particle apart. Some of them are two particles apart, maybe three particles apart, but not very far at all. Now, if you could actually see this in real life and you could actually see the gas particles, you'd see that they're much further apart relative to the size of the particles. So, for example, the example on the slide is helium. So if you looked at a helium particle, a helium atom, the distance between the, any two helium, helium atoms is going to be about 55 times bigger than the actual size of the helium atom. So you can see why we don't draw this on the diagram, because you'd have to have a really massive space just to show two diagrams, two, sorry, two atoms, or you'd have to have your atoms drawn really small so that you could accurately draw the distance between them. So that's why they're not drawn accurately. And this is why people have these misconceptions about the particle model. So the next problem with the particle model is the change in volume during melting and boiling. So you, as you know, when you go from a solid to a liquid, you put heat in, you put energy in, and it, and it melts. And when you do that, you've got the same number of particles in the liquid, 
as you had in the solid. But, as we've said before, in the liquid, particles are moving past each other, so they're not in that regular arrangement anymore. And there's going to be small gaps between them, not massive gaps, but there's going to be small gaps in between them. And because there's now slightly smaller gaps between some of the particles, they're going to take up a bigger space. So when you go from a solid to a liquid, it's going to take up a bigger volume because the force of attraction between them are weaker and the particles are moving more, so they're slightly further apart from each other. Now, when you go from a liquid to a gas, so when you're boiling it, it's even more, there's a massive increase in volume because the particle, the, you've really overcome those forces of attraction, they're much weaker now. And the particles are moving round a lot more, they're a lot further apart. So as we said before, they're about 55 times the size of the particle apart from each other. So you've got a massive increase in volume going from a liquid to a gas. And we don't always show this when we sh use particle diagrams to show, for example, evaporating going from a liquid to a gas. We usually have a, a a much smaller volume for the gas than we should have. So we have to be careful when we're thinking about this. So back to our lesson objectives, they were to compare the size of the particles to the distances between them, describe the forces between the particles and explain the limitations of the particle model. So if you don't feel you've met these objectives, then you need to look back over the video and have a rethink about things and try and get these solidified in your mind.